Welcome to Plowman's Backyard. If it's your first time here, my name is Kendra. And if you are not new here, you probably know our Partridge Chanticleer journey. We have had Partridge Chanticleers off and on over the past maybe four or five years. This is our third attempt of having Partridge Chanticleer uh, flock. Our first one got out of it. They died off, they're a lot older. And then we got into the barnyard mix, which we've had for about five years. And then we got back into the Partridge Chanticleer, just looking for a more heritage, dual purpose breed. And we actually lost our flock last winter. Now we have a new flock. And again, a predator is trying to um, get into this flock. And this time around, it's digging under our fence. Now, interestingly enough, we have had our chicken barn and the runs for about, I don't know, maybe five years. And we have uh, made an addition about three years ago, have never had a problem. But for some reason, these predators only want the partridge chanticleers. It's interesting because our barnyard mix flock is quite colorful, quite loud and energetic. Whereas the Partridge Chanticleer, they more camouflage in with things. They're very quiet, docile, and they don't tend to draw attention to themselves. So it makes me wonder why. But anyways, I'm trying to figure out. So with our coop, uh, when Jason had built, my husband had built it, we have skirted it everywhere, like all along the sides with hardware cloth. And so far that's worked really great. But right now, like basically in our barn, we have dirt floors. And what's happening is that they're trying to dig under where the door is in the dirt floor. So I'm trying to figure out the best way of dealing with this issue. Um, this animal, we're not sure if it's a fox, we're not sure like if it's a skunk or porcupine, whatever, um, raccoon. It's been back for the past couple nights. Each time we tend to temporarily fix it, but it's still digging and still moving where it's moving its location where it's digging. It hasn't gotten in yet. I'm so thankful. It's been such a crazy week. We've been getting home quite late at night, so we haven't really had the time to really see on how to fix it. But I've got a few hours this morning and I'm just going to do my best. I, I think I'm probably going to try and dig and put some rocks and hardware cloth. I also picked up a couple patio stones um, just to, to see if we can stop anything from digging. So when you're doing your barn, especially since we are so close to the forest line, you want to make sure that you skirt it. So you can skirt it with about anywhere from like 12, 13 uh, inches of hardware cloth on the outside of your coop. So as you can see here, the other day when we came, this here was all dug out in a huge hole. Fix that up and now it has been trying to get in just underneath the corner. We did have a piece of wood that went straight across, but um, with weather and stuff, and it being soil, it actually rotted out. So this thing is able to dig under. Here you can see our skirt that comes out quite far. Again, we haven't had any issues with um, this part of the coop. It seems to be now just the door. I wanna see if I can put some hardware cloth or rocks or something in here. As you can see, I picked up a couple patio stones, hoping that we were kind of securing this area here. And that didn't work out because he decided to start digging and go under here. So what I'm going to use is this half inch hardware cloth. I love using hardware cloth instead of uh, chicken wire. Chicken wire is basically to keep chickens in, not predators out. And typically I like using a quarter inch space for hardware cloth. This was on sale. It was the right place at the right time. So I grabbed this up and this should do perfectly fine for um, like just the parameter of what I'm going to do to prevent the predator from digging into this coop. Plus I have a couple patio stones I'm gonna put on top and find some rocks as well. What I'm going to do is just be dealing with this area here. You can see there's quite a spot under there and kind of doing all this area here. Once something reaches so far digging in, it's not gonna, it definitely won't dig um, like two feet. I wanna say about 12 inches would be sufficient enough to stop a predator from digging any further to get into your coop. So you can basically see here that just some, this wood around here as well as here has all disintegrated just from having the um, the dirt floor. So that's something to consider when you're building your coop. What I've done now is just taken a pair of these. I've cut off just a section of the hardware cloth just to have it butt it right up against the curtain that is outside. If you can see here or not, but I've just butted it up as close as I can and try and get some under this other um, apron 
of the smaller hardware cloth that we've got. So the next step is there's just a little bit of a gap under here and I'm going to roll this out and just try and slide it as best I can and butt it up, which should give us enough room on the outside. You can see here um, the outside of the door that the door will still shut and still enough on the inside and they shouldn't dig. That's way too big for them to dig under and try and get through. So, and then my plan is to put the patio stone on top of here and it actually will fit right under here nicely and the door will still shut. I'm just gonna continue rolling this out and cut it to size as close as I can and slide it as underneath this piece of wood as I can. I have to say, I am no handy woman, but uh, we'll see how I do and see if this actually works. <laughs> So this is what I've done so far. I'm going to get some rocks put over here to hold that down. That's about one foot left over here. So I'm going to see if there's like a smaller patio stone or some sort of concrete something to put down at that end. Now I'm just going to see if the door will shut and we'll see how this works out. Seems like the door seems to shut just nicely. Now, like I said, if I could get another one, I think we are sufficient enough and Hopefully we'll be okay. Like I said, we've got the, the apron on the side all along the sides here. So hopefully that will do. Well, I did it all by myself. Can you believe it? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to get some rocks and we're going to finish this off. So happy that it didn't take so long. I thought I was going to have to dig down or dig a trench, but I didn't want to encourage any more digging. So I think this should work and I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, Jason's actually gonna put up our 360 uh, game camera. I just gotta get some batteries. We're gonna see what this critter is. My guess it could be a fox or a raccoon. As you can see, we have two very broody hens here. She should be due at any time. If not, perhaps there could be one under her right now. She's been sitting on them for almost three weeks. And this young lady here has been sitting on hers for about two weeks. So she has about another week to go. Quite happy that the flock will be increasing as long as we can stop this predator from getting in this coop. And we have another hen that has decided to find a new nesting place in the trunk of this car. Well, she stepped off of her nest for a little bit. You can see the amount of eggs. And I don't know how many eggs she has under her nest. Well, we literally just found out last night that it has been a raccoon that's been trying to get into our Chanticleer coop. We caught it on uh, the game camera. And the last few days I've been letting the chickens out and there's been no issues. It's only been at night. So I just came out, let them out. Um, all the chickens out and the Chanticleers have free roam of the of the yard and stuff so I didn't think there'd be an issue because they usually find a place to hide but I literally just went in to start making breakfast and Hannah heard some commotion so I'm like Hannah Hannah send the dog out so we send Doug out he went flying and we could hear um the the, the chickens we could hear that they were being attacked by something we're assuming that it's it, the raccoon came back but there is feathers everywhere. Thankfully, thankfully we caught it real quick. Hannah was really quick to hear it. Doug took off like, like a bullet in the, in the bush and um, all of our Chanticleers are fine. They're the only ones that were attacked. The two hens have um, cuts and they're bleeding um, and lots of feathers gone. And the rooster, his tail feathers are gone. So what we're thinking is that the rooster tried to come and um, protect his hens and I don't know anyways I don't know what was really going on but the raccoon took off behind me um, so we're going to need to clear that which we've been talking about clearing that anyways it's just it's a time thing so now we, it needs to go up a little higher on the priority list here but Doug did a great job he chased something off and he came right back he didn't wander off and stay gone but um Unfortunately, today we're just going to have to put all the chickens back in the barn. They're just going to have to stay inside for a while until we um, clear up some area and uh, 
we're just gonna have to have the dog out chained up until he gets more used to until we get the spot on thing well trained with that but we're gonna have to chain him up there's a dog house back there we can tie him up to a tree it's really shaded there so if we are gonna have the chickens out it's gonna have to be when we're home and when the dog's here out with them but um i think for now for the next little while we're just going to keep them in unfortunately but it's the the really all we can do unless we can think of i mean the next best thing honestly is probably the dog thing we can't have him out all the time right now until he's like well trained with a spot on collar but the next thing would be electric fencing is to look into so um those are really the only options like we're doing everything that we can but these pests that do come around they're a real nuisance and trying to find a way to trap this thing um, and get him gone is up on our list so we're gonna try and figure that out and i'm just so thankful we didn't lose any and we've got babies coming in there so we really don't want any issues in the chanticleer coop so if you have any tips for us um shoot them down in the comments below we'd love to hear them and you know we're fort knox and this thing as best that we can but we need to get rid of this uh, nuisance raccoon. So that's top on the priority. Anyways, that's it. That's all we can do. Well, it's 5.30 in the morning the next day after setting the trap and we've caught something. So we're gonna go and check it out, see what we caught. So this is our little guy. He's not so little. Um, again, he was probably coming to dig for our barnyard mix. Shot the clear coop is still good and the trap worked, so success I'd say.